Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's one thing to make the shift, but we hear it a lot from a lot of CHROs and people in this call. You know, it's it's one thing to have this plan about we need to be more agile, more creative, but it's another thing to get a practitioner who works for us with us to do that to be able to, you know, unlearn, relearn, do you know, upskill mm-hmm. things like that. And so, I'm just wondering if you had any kind of examples of what worked, what has it, and I'm sure it's a work in progress, but. I'm just curious about that. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. You kind of alluded to it a little bit on the talent side. I think actually four years ago, early on, we're probably in a better spot today just because the industry has shifted a little bit. And then to, you know, great programs like yourselves, Agile of HR is is more even of a topic. But, you know, when we started the journey four years ago, it was even hard to find talent that, you know, kind of knew how to spell HR, uh, sorry, Agile in an HR way, right? (laughs) Um, And so also it breaks some of the paradigms from traditional schooling, which is why programs like yours are so great in this of, you know, traditional HR and, and again, agile from a mindset perspective, product mindset, UI, UX, uh, persona work, as Jay mentioned, and journey mapping, like those are not really topics you see in an HR curriculum. And, um, and so there is quite a bit of upskilling. We did partner with a vendor as well to provide and invest in training into our associates early on. We're finding that's not as much of a need now, uh, which is actually great. Shows a little bit of maturity in the journey. Part of it is because our teams in the HR world are working so closely with the product and tech teams right on the tech side. And so it becomes a more natural way of working. And, you know, as you kind of sit with your colleagues, natural upskilling as well. And then I think the other thing is making sure the teams, right, those tighter teams who are working on those big problems have the right uh, mixture of skill sets. You don't need everybody to be, you know, fully product mindset. If you have a few peppered in there, because in some cases you also need strong functional HR expertise and have them be a part of your team. Um, So, you know, an example would be, you know, as we simplify the new hire process as an example, that was an agile team working on that last year with COVID hiring. We needed to ramp up hiring in our stores and facilities and clubs. Um, dramatically, um, given, you know, everybody was trying to buy toilet paper and and we needed stockers and we needed people to fulfill those orders. And our hiring process was too cumbersome, um, including the tech enablement with that. And so the Tiger team put together with that included a mix of, you know, product folks and technology, product-minded HR professionals who kind of knew the methodology and, and could really think about, you know, associate pain points in the process, but it also included, you know, employment legal counsel, as well as, um, you know, folks who uh, are functional expert IO psychologists in assessment protocols, right, and making sure that the assessments we use to hire our folks are validated, as an example. And so we think about that cross-functional mix of a team, which actually is one of the agile principles as well, and into the chat earlier on inclusivity and different perspectives. So, I think that's an important call and lesson learned as well. It does not have to be one size fits all and everybody needs to be an expert in product mindset and agile methodology, but instead you need a few of those and then the right mix around them. And then, then they're really clear on their role and how they contribute to the team. Yeah, but Marion, I'll, I'll add, I think, you know, if you go where we've seen, I'll call the world word flops or uh, step backs and test and learns and you learn you learn from some of the bad is, is Marin, you hit it at the very end, I think. Roles and responsibilities as you stand up these tiger teams, that's where we've seen a lot of, I'll call it false positives and even false negatives. So you think you're going to make traction and then all of a sudden you lose it because the teams are competing or I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Our, our other challenges we've seen, um, so role and responsibility would be a big one. The second one is our tech partners readiness because it, the other thing we, I think we underestimate in the HR space is our tech partners are so waterfall driven. So I got to build it. You tell me what you want. You give me every requirement. I go build it and you get it. Because most of our platforms are mainframe. We're not as cloud oriented, especially on our legacy space. And, you know, Walmart's 60 years old. So we have a lot of older technology. So historically, we've not had just to kind of push our HR teams, Marin, between the specialists and the uh, partners, but also push our tech teams because our tech teams really want to go cook it in a little room and then deliver it all. And then of course it took them 12 weeks and in 12 weeks we've already changed what we really needed to solve because the customer changed, the associate changed, the output changed. So we've seen a lot of um, learnings through that. And then the other thing, and Mary, you hit on it, is, is when we don't empower 
that small team or that product group, uh, they tend to, to flop again, or they don't actually meet the outcomes of the expectations. And that's on Marin and I, and in different groups, like as Marin talked about, Walmart US was kind of our spearhead for this. And they really did a good job of inculcating it culturally into the HR space. And then we've allowed that culture to kind of spread, which makes a huge difference because we got it kind of seeded, but it's still been some, you know, pluses and minuses. And where I would, I would challenge everyone is, as Marin talked about, the more you can get a few strong players who can make a difference and you let them lead one of those agile teams you put on something, you then start seeing others grab it and go try to repeat it and replicate it. And then you can coach them to deliver it better. But that's kind of been our learning, or at least from my side, Marin, watching it.